Hello. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the properties of integrals. We're actually not going to do any integrals ourselves. We're going to be getting some integrals, but we're going to use those to figure out um, other ones. Um, we'll be given a couple and we'll find out other ones. There's a couple of cool things that you can do with integrals. One is these definite integrals. These are all definite integrals is you can swap these orders if you want. And if you ever want to swap these around, you totally can. All you got to do is just make it negative. And if, uh, the idea is that if you're doing it from one to the other, and if you do that backwards, then it's just, well, it's backwards. So what's a mathematical backwards negative? The next thing is if you have an integral, you can actually break it into two separate integrals if that will make your work easier. You'll see why. And uh, there are times where we want to break them into bits. Um, so the integral can be broken up into parts. You can pick some C value um, to separate it into two separate integrals if it's easier to find these two separately rather than going straight from A to B. Think about if the uh, function is sliding up and down above and below the X and Y axis. Um, next is if you have a constant stuck inside of a integral, you can take it out. If it's just in the way, you can just put it in front, no matter. Um, think about if we were uh, factoring out from a summation, uh, you don't have to like multiply it all the time. You can just multiply it once at the beginning and do your adding first. Next, if you've got two separate functions that are being added together inside of an integral, then you can separate them out. And maybe you want to do the integration of one of them and then add or subtract it to the integration of the other one. So if it's easier, you can't really get those functions to like go together. You could deal with them separately and then add up the two uh, values that you get. So here's some examples. Somebody has done, been so kind as to tell me what the integrals of these things are, and I just got to figure out what these are. Now, this first one's kind of silly. Um, you're try trying to figure out what the area is between that curve from 2 to 2. You, if you look at the graph, it's, it's real silly. So here's x cubed, right? Whoop. If you're checking the integral from 2 to 2, that is a line which has an area under that curve of nothing because a line has no thickness. So it's just zero, nothing happens. So that's one of the properties that I skipped up at the top. If these two values are the same, its area is just zero. Doesn't happen a lot, but every once in a while they try to trick you with something like that. Um, now this one from four to two, and we've got a whole bunch of things. Well, uh, let's break it up because I don't know how to put those things together. So I'm gonna break it up into separate integrals using that property that, hey, if you've got multiple functions, I've got this function of 10 plus this function of 4x. And I've got a function of 3x cubed. 2 to 4. And then all of these should have dx's. dx, uh, dx, and dx. Okay, so this one's got, um, ha has like a three in front of it. So we can take that constant out. So we can make this a three integral from two to four of x cubed dx. And the reason I wanted to do that is I know what x cubed is. It's 60. So this is just three times 60. Well, the integral from four to two of x cubed is 60. Somebody was kind enough to tell me that. Thanks, person who told me that. Uh, this one has a, I can do that same trick. It, I can take this four out. So this is the integral from two to four of x dx. Oh, but somebody was so kind to tell me what the integral from two to four of x dx was. It's six. So this is just four times six. Neat. Uh, next, uh, this one is got a 10. You can take that 10 out. Oh, yeah, yeah, 10 out. So that's the integral from 2 to 4 of dx. Well, hey, somebody told me that. It's 2. So this is just 10 times 2. So add them up. Subtract the thingies. This is 20 plus 4 times 6 is 24 minus 180. So that's... Uh, 44, 180 minus 44 is 100, negative 136, hopefully. 
I don't know. If I got that wrong, you all can fix it. <laughs> all right. This one, again, they've given us some integrals already, and I want to figure out what they're going to be. So uh, for A, so I'm going from 0 to 7, and I got 1 to 5 and 5 to 7. So this is kind of the first leg of the journey, and then this is the second leg of the journey. So this thing is the same as finding the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x plus the integral from 5 to 7 of f of x. So that just is 10 plus 3. So that's 13. Um, they gave me from 0 to 5. This is 5 to 0. So that means I need to do the opposite. So this is the opposite value of 0 to 5. f of x dx. Oh, these don't have dx's on them. So it'll be just the negative value of that. So that's just negative 10. All right. Um, this is another one. It's going from 5 to 5. And if it's going from one thing and ending at the stop, that's just a perfectly straight line, which has no area. So that's 0. Um, from 0 to 5. But, oh, it's got a 3 in there. That's okay. We can pull that 3 out and go from 0 to 5. f of x dx. And just do 3 times 10, which is 30. Cool. And that's it. Nice and easy. Um, these are the ones that will happen most common. So just if you want to note them particularly in your notes, um, being able to swap A and B actually turns out to be really, really helpful depending upon what we're doing. But that one comes up a lot that we want A and B to be swapped. Um, so we just make them negative. Um, being able to break the integral up into different parts as we move from A to B and have some value C in between them, that really, really helps when you're finding integrals. And then finally, if you have multiple functions being added or subtracted together, doing those integrals separately is always a lot easier than trying to find the integral all at once. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.